What is up guys, Charlie Pang is here. Welcome to another video. Today I'm showing you guys how to turn your photos into a shirt design using Photoshop. But before we get into it, can you guys find the alpaca in the room? You guys keep finding it so fast. So I kind of had a clever spot for it this time. Let me know if you guys find it in the comment section below. Let's get it guys. I'm going to meet you in Photoshop. Let's get started. What's up guys. Welcome to Photoshop. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to take a photo and make it into a t-shirt design. This is perfect for your own photos because you guys are going to see how I kind of manipulate photos in order to make them a t-shirt design. So you guys get to see my process and I think that is so valuable. So I have this photo that I found on unsplash.com. Here it is right here. This is the website that I use to find all my photos if I'm not taking a photo. And this is a great way to start designing. So if you guys can't go take a photo and you're not capable or you just don't have a good camera, that's totally fine. You can either use your iPhone, your your Android phone, whatever phone you have, or you can just go on here and find a free photo and they are free to use. So you're not going to get in trouble. That's the beauty of it. So anyway, with that out of the way, I have this photo that I found of this girl and I really love the shadows on her face. It's really moody. So I really wanted to create something cool with it. So a lot of you guys ask me how I come up with my designs. How do I find inspiration? Really, my inspiration comes from my own imagination most of the time. With this photo, I really had to challenge myself because looking at it, I'm like, what can I do with this? What kind of stuff can I create with this? And I ultimately came up with this design right here. So a lot of it's just crazy uh, image manipulation. You know what I mean? Like you're you're editing the photo so hard just to get something cool out of it. So anyway, we're going to do that today. I'm going to go ahead and go to this new document. I'm going to hide everything. So we're just going to basically create a new group and hide everything in that new group. So I'm using the same document to create a new design for you guys. And normally the background would probably be white. So I just invert the background so it's black and I can name this BG. And later on, we're going to change the background color and all that stuff. But for now, we're just going to keep it pure black. And that's simply because we want it to match our photo. So. Another thing is when I design something uh, using a photo, I always like to match my background to that photo so it's easier to blend if that makes sense. Because we're using a lot of layer masks today and when you do that, it's uh, it's harder to blend stuff when you have opposite backgrounds, if that makes sense. So anyway, so what I wanna do is double click on that layer and unlock it. I just wanna do Command A and copy the entire artboard and then I wanna paste it into my new document. It's gonna be quite large, but that's totally fine. We're going to go ahead and resize it and um, I'm probably going to end up making this design just a little different from the last one that I just showed you, but we're going to keep referencing it too. So as you can see, we did this split thing, which is something I really enjoy doing. So I'm just going to resize it to kind of figure out where I want it. And I think about right here is actually good. We don't want to make it too big because we need some room on our canvas. Before going any further, I want to name this photo one just like that. And we're going to duplicate it and name this photo two, just so we know where everything is. So we're keeping it nice and organized. And we can hide them for now. The next thing I want to do is go to my pen tool and I just want to make a line just like this. So we're going to kind of make it like around 45 degrees. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that, but just the idea of it, you know. And we want to make it 15 pixels wide and we also want to make the stroke white. So that's really important. So we're just going to basically center it now. Again, I'm doing Command A, centering it. Now that we have this line, I'm going to unhide photo two, not photo one. We're going to unhide photo two and we're going to flip it. So I'm going to do Command T and then flip it. So I'm going to flip it vertically and I'm going to flip it horizontally. Okay. And you'll see why in a second. And then if I unhide photo one, we can put that above it and you can see that that one's in the normal spot. So now what we're going to do is add a layer mask on photo one. We just want to add a layer mask. And then what I'm going to do after this is take the polygonal tool and I'm basically going to select where this line is. Let me zoom in so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Well, not that much. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, so we're just going to select the bottom of the image and what we want to do is mask it out by filling it with black. And then what that's going to do is it's going to delete the bottom half. And as you can see, now we have the bottom gone. But as you can see, the bottom image needs to be basically positioned a little bit better. So I'm just going to recenter it and drag it down just a little bit more. So we're matching the top, if that makes sense. See how our lips are? We want to make sure that those are pretty much the same. Now we just need to do a little bit of cleaning up. So as you can see, the top image is cutting off the bottom image right here because the mask. So what I need to do is click on photo one's mask, which is this top image. Go to my paintbrush. I'm going to go to a hard round and I want to make sure black selected as my foreground. And I'm just going to paint over that area and make sure it's deleted all the way so it doesn't cut off her hair on the bottom. From here, what I can do now is actually merge these uh, photos together and I can name this photos. Now that I have both photos in a group, what I want to do is duplicate them once and I want to convert them into a smart object because we're going to make a couple adjustments to this layer. Now, every time we add an adjustment, it's not going to be a permanent change and you're going to see exactly what I mean. That's the beauty of smart objects. So I want to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer and I'm going to lower the saturation to 
uh, negative 100 and then click OK. And as you can see, it's added as a smart filter so I can toggle that on and off. Again, we're not working destructively. We're gonna go ahead and add one more layer. We're gonna add a levels layer and we're gonna adjust with the shadows, midtones, and the highlights in order to bring out some of the detail in this image just a little bit more because right now it's looking a little too dark. So I'm just gonna kind of raise the shadows up a little bit and then I'm also gonna raise the highlights up just a little bit. Not too much, so we're just gonna make it a little punchy and that looks pretty good, so we're gonna click OK on that. That looks way better, so now what I wanna do is go up to this line and just name it line. As you can see, I'm renaming every layer just to make sure I know exactly where all the layers are. The next thing I wanna do is make sure I'm adding my middle element, which was the eye. So what I wanna to do to make that eye, and I'll show you guys a quick trick to make an eye. All I wanna do is drag out a circle, so without holding in anything, I'm just gonna drag it out first and then hold in shift and that's gonna force it to um, you know resize evenly. And then I'm gonna let go of it. And as you can see, it created it on a separate layer, which is what I wanted. And then from here, what I wanna do is fill it with a really bright color. So we're gonna go yellow and we're gonna take away the stroke for now. Now what we wanna do is duplicate it. So I'm gonna do Command J and I'm gonna basically move it over right here. And from here, what I wanna do is change the blend mode on that duplicated copy to divide. And as you can see, you have this eye shape that's formed. So I'm gonna rasterize both layers and I wanna uh, select both of them holding in shift um, and making sure both are selected. And I wanna merge those layers together. So as you can see, now we have that eye in the center. Now all I wanna do is take my magic wand tool and select the white and do Command X to delete it. And then I can get rid of the other part and then do Command V to paste it. And then I wanna rotate it. So I'm just gonna do Command T, rotate it real quick. Now we have our eye in the right position. So I wanna fill this with black actually. So I wanna add a color overlay real quick. We're gonna make it black. And then I wanna add a stroke and the stroke's gonna be 15, okay? And that's simply because this line that we created with the pen tool has a 15 stroke as well. So we wanna copy that stroke if that makes sense. I have my eye shape now and I have the line. So we wanna select both layers and we wanna group these and we can name these um, center assets or something like that just so we know where they are. Now what I need to do is actually find an eye for the center of this design where this eye shape is. So we're gonna go find an eye real quick. Go to unsplash.com and just type an eye. Basically we just need an eye. So I'm gonna select this one real quick, copy that, and then we're gonna drag it in, or we're actually we're gonna paste it in. So I'm gonna do Command V. Now we have an eye, and we wanna lower the opacity so we can kind of figure out where to position this eye, if that makes sense. So I think about right there is pretty good. So as you can see, the white part I'm kind of keeping, but the top part I don't care so much about. We can even resize it maybe just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more breathing room. Now we need to start blending this eye into our design. So what I wanna do is convert this to a smart object. We're gonna desaturate it real quick. So we're gonna to go to hue and saturation again, desaturate it. So we're just gonna take the saturation all the way down to negative 100, just like we did the other design. And then what we wanna do is add a layer mask. And then we're gonna take our paintbrush and start masking around this eye, but we wanna make sure it's on a soft round and make sure the flow's at 58% or whatever, anything around that's gonna work great. And then we just wanna start masking. And as you can see, we're, gonna, we're just taking away what we don't want. So just keep masking around the eye, painting black on it, and it's gonna delete anything that you don't want. And then you can just change the foreground color to white to add it back. So once you're done with this, then we're gonna move on to adding more textures and stuff like that to the design, but this is looking pretty good so far. What I wanna do is actually duplicate the center assets once, and then I wanna merge the group together, and then I wanna duplicate it one more time and hide that um, extra copy, and we're gonna change the blend mode on this other copy to overlay. And as you can see, it looks pretty cool, right? So now what we wanna do is toggle on this other one and lower the opacity just a little bit. And then I wanna add a layer mask to this copy and just kinda of delete certain parts of it to make it kinda of look cool, blend it in a little better. So really all we're doing is we're trying to blend this line a little bit better. You guys already know how I love my texture, so I'm gonna go on Google real quick and we're gonna find some lines or something like that to add to it. So let's type in scan line texture just to see what happens. Go to images. I'm just looking for any texture that looks interesting. I really like this scanline background stock video uh, photo right here. So we're gonna take this one and we're gonna copy it and we're just gonna paste it on our document and we're gonna rotate it. So the lines are facing vertical instead of horizontal. So I'm gonna hit return, make sure it's centered. And I wanna uh, name this texture one in case I add another texture so I know where things are. Before I continue on, I want you guys to pause the video right now and think about the next steps that I'm gonna make in order to blend this texture in with this design. I think that's a great exercise to really learn from what I'm doing here. If your answer was changing the blend mode to this texture, you are correct. We're just gonna change the blend mode to something like overlay or screen. We're just gonna mess with the blend modes real quick and figure out what's gonna look best. And really, this is subjective. You can do whatever looks best to you, but I think screen looks the best. And then from here, what I wanna do is actually make it a smart object. 
And the reason why is because we need to adjust the levels of it to make it blend a little bit better. So we're gonna go to levels. And now that this is a smart object, I can basically toggle the levels on and off. And we're just gonna do what we always do. We're just gonna change the midtones and make maybe the highlights pop just a little bit more and change the shadows. We just want this to be very subtle. We, we don't want this texture to be too overwhelming or anything like that. So, um, and we can also change the positioning. So I think that looks pretty good. And then what I wanna do is add a layer mask, which is something I typically do when I wanna change the way things look a little bit. So I wanna add a layer mask. I don't want the eye to be affected too much. So. Um, again, we're just kind of messing with where this line is, just so it's not too intense, just like this. I want it to be more sporadic instead of just full force. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, the next thing I wanna do though is start adding some text. So we're gonna actually create some text real quick. I went to my T tool and I wanna type out something. So let me change the size of this and make it white. We're just gonna type out my enemies and I. And um, this is just basically for example purposes. This isn't actually a design for them. They didn't buy it off me or anything like that. Um, but I'm just showing you guys just to give you guys an example. So what I did to select all the text is I just double clicked on the names thumbnail, which is the T right here, and it selects all of it. And I'm using the option key and holding that in, and then I'm hitting the arrows right and left, and that's gonna change the kerning, the letter spacing, and that's exactly how I'm doing that so fast. So that's a really easy way to do that. Now I just wanna duplicate the text. So I'm gonna select the text and do Command J, and we're just gonna drag that down. And there's so many different ways to duplicate something. So look up shortcuts and you guys will just be blown away by how many shortcuts there are in Photoshop. So um, now what I wanna do is type in um, the beast inside. And I think that's one of their song names or their album name, I forgot what it was. Anyway, now what we're gonna do is just resize the text by using the, the text uh, shortcut right here. And that's gonna allow us to resize it. We're gonna center it. And then what I wanna do is change the letter uh, spacing again. So holding an option, I'm gonna hit right on my keyboard. We're really gonna space this out just like that. And then I wanna center that. We're gonna kinda of make it a little bit smaller. I just want it to be very subtle, you know what I mean? And then from here what I wanna do is um, I can either double click on the text again and then change the color from here or I can just add a color overlay. One thing I like to do is just add a color overlay. I don't know why, that's just a habit I've always gotten into. Now we're ready to move on to some color. So what I wanna do is actually create one more layer and I wanna to go to my gradient tool and I just wanna change the gradient color. So I wanna make the white part red is what I wanna do. So we're gonna make it a poppy red, click OK, click OK, and we're just gonna drag up and see what it does. So as you can see, it made this nice gradient uh, from red to black, and then we wanna change the blend mode to something that blends into our design, so we're just gonna kinda of mess with it. I think soft light looks pretty good, and I'm gonna lower the opacity just a little bit. That's pretty much it for this design. This is how I would create a band design. This is my entire process. This is the way I think. I hope you guys enjoy it. So now let's do a before and after. Here's the photo that we started with, and here's what we ended with. Isn't that crazy? And that, my friends, is how you turn your photos into a shirt design using Photoshop. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you learned a thing or two and you love my videos, make sure you are subscribed because I make videos like this one every single week. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button and also comment in the section below. I would love to hear from you guys. And before I go, did you guys find the alpaca? I'm just curious, did you find it? The funny story about the alpaca is that one day I was sitting here and my girlfriend walks in with this stuffed alpaca, a little stuffed animal, and she's like, hey, put this in your office. And she put it in the planner back here and she's like, he's so cute, keep him in here. So I was just like, I don't want that. Like get, get it out of here, you know? And she's like, no, you need to keep it. It has to happen. So. I decided to turn it into like a Where's Waldo thing on my videos. So I hope you guys are enjoying finding him in every video. Um, I'm not sure if he's gonna stay in the videos, but maybe he will, we'll see. But anyway, guys, keep creating, keep being awesome. I'll catch you guys in the next video, peace.